Hey, this is Brian. We're going to uh, do some Illustrator today. So I've already opened Illustrator. I've got my... Um, it starts with this document, but I'm going to go up here and say New Document. There's many different ways to do things in Illustrator. Um, I'm just going to show you one of them. I've already selected Tabloid right here. So it says uh, 17 by 11. And I'm going to say OK. Black Edge shows me the, the printed My Document and over the, um, the boundary. So first I'm going to get my um, I, uh, magnifier tool. If I hold down Option, I will minus, just so I can see the whole thing at once. Uh, what I usually do is I start off by making a square, and this you guys can do different ways, but I'll make a square, and it should snap to those document boundaries, more or less. And that gives me a center point, and the reason now I want that is because I'm going to make another square that's my kind of boundaries, my visual boundaries, and, and click in the center with that square. I'm going to say 16 by 10. This should give me plenty of space around here, just in case the printer doesn't print all the way to the edge. Next step, I'm going to, um, where do I do that? Uh, view effect. Guides, make into a guide. So I do most everything by commands, and so I'm trying to show you the menus because that's a little easier for the first time. So that won't print. That's just to help me line things up so I can move things around. I can um, snap to those corners. So this is going to kind of help me set up my document. Um, in this case, uh, let's the heck. Um, let's do some layers though first. Um, I think this is layers here. This may look different to you, but uh, let's click on this. We got layers. Um, I'm going to double click where it has the words and rename this to background. I'll just put back for short, fine. And then over here there's a little new page icon. I'm going to click on that. There's a new layer. Double click on that. And we'll call this art. And we'll do one more that's text. This is just the way I set it up. So it, whatever its highlight is where you're going to be doing your artwork. Um, right now I'm going to work in the background. And actually, let's go to art, and we'll bring in our drawing. And um, you can do this by just dragging and dropping. I'll try it by doing place. So I go to my desktop, where I got my image right here. And I can, if you link to the file, it won't actually include the file. It will, you, you'll have to make sure that this scan is with your document when you go to print it. So make sure that's not checked. You just want to embed it into the document, and then say place. And there's my drawing, so that's a good start. Um, let's scoot that down somewhere. And this is going to be called the uh, Super Race Car or something rather. So next step is to grab my text tool. And actually, I'm just going to click anywhere and start typing. We'll call this, uh, oops, I want my caps on. And I can see that type is way too small, right? So. Um, I want this to be the headline. So I'm going to go up and find my text tool, which I don't see here. So I'll just go Command T for text. And that will give me a basic setup box here with the font name and the size and a few other details. And first, let's go up to a larger size. So for headline, 72 to 100 is probably a good size. Um, I was going to do that in caps, but. Let's go to 100. And um, it won't update until you click out of that box. So um, you're getting there. Let's choose a bold font. And let's go ahead and change this uh, to uppercase. In this case, you could retype it. But there is a um, option to change the case into uppercase. There we go, eraser. Now I want something even bolder than that and cooler, so I'm going to click here and get a um, some sort of cool racer looking font. Ooh, that looks nice and exciting. Um, in this case, the font is a little bit, that's probably good. I'll leave it as is. So now I want this to be, um, notice when I hover over it, it kind of highlights. So it's hard to type sometimes when you're typing because it highlights. And so it's a little hard to see. Racer. Um, we'll call it the Racer 2000. 
Ooh, it's got little polka dots there. Um, usually my headline, I don't want to be um, solid black, so I'll choose my colors. And this is showing me the, the headline color here. And I'll cut that down to like, let's say 30% gray or even less, let's say 20. I could type in there too. Uh, and sometimes I add like a little color cast depending on what I'm doing, but in this case, mm -hmm. The drawing itself had um, lots of blue in it, so I had a little bit of blue in the headline. Now, border treatments and stuff are personal style, but let's do, um, let me do something here for a minute. I'm going to do a color fade uh, for the top and then a color fade up for the bottom just for fun. So I've drawn a box. Um, next up is I want gradients, which I'm not sure. Here it is. And I'll choose this and it changed this to a gradient. Now a lot of these boxes in the beginner mode don't have all of your options so if you click I think here, oh, let's do that again, if you click here, show options. I want to um, keep this as a linear but I want to change the angle to 90 degrees. And um, let's see what we've got, yeah that's where I want it to go. And whenever you go from black to white it looks a little cheesy. I want to um, I want to change the color, sorry, so I'll click on the black and this brings me to my color dialog box and I gotta say this is a little lame because um, what I want is CYNK colors and it doesn't show you that if you're in black and also it's a little confused right now because it's talking about that this is filled with a gradient but meanwhile I just want to change part of the color so, see, when I click on a color, the whole thing changes again. So let me go back to gradient. Uh, where did we go? Pink. Because really what I want is I want to just change this color. And I want to go to CYMK. And I want to cut that down too. And I'll get this a lot more blue. And I've also lost my 90 degrees. And again, this won't update until I click on something. So that's good. Now there's a couple, there's a problem here because it's being, um, it's covering over my drawing. So I'm gonna go grab my arrow tool and it's covering over my type as well. And go back to my layers and I'm gonna move this down to my background. So I've got this now so far. So. But now my, my uh, drawing's got this white background around it, so what am I going to do about that? Well, there's a couple options there too, but one thing I could do is I could go under the transparency option and make this car just multiply. So now that lays on top of that. But that color will come through and it's a little hard to see here, so I could probably get away with just this. But let's make this a little bit longer by stretching this out. And you can see it's also put a, um, a kind of a tone over the whole car because now the car is almost like it was printed on tracing paper. So, well, I could do a couple different things. I find the easiest thing to do is to draw a shape layer that's going to sit between these two things. And that's going to be filled with white. So I'm going to use my pencil tool over here. And I can draw shapes. <clears throat> And it doesn't have to be super exact. I actually want to stay on the inside of my lines because I don't want to see any of this poking through. Um, and I can go back and adjust this. Um, so for example, if I just connected this right now, let's, let's see what this looks like. So right now, if I go over here, it says this shape is filled with nothing and stroked with nothing. But I want to fill it with something so over my color palette, I will choose white. And it just so happens that because this uh, shape is in the background layer and my art is in this layer, it's already behind this object. So that's good. And you can kind of see the difference here. I'll click off of it, zoom in here. So you can see where the white shape is and where it wasn't. So let me go and finish cleaning this up so I'm going to click on it use my pencil tool again and 
I will start in an area where the line was. Oh, and I, sometimes I run out of room. Ah, I went out of line a little bit, but that's okay. And then I come back somewhere to the line is and kind of blend in, and that will follow in here. Now this part doesn't really matter so much since it's just white, but maybe I'll go ahead and do it just in case. Every once in a while this the drawing tool just wigs out and gives you some crazy shape, so you have to undo and redo, but um, that's basically it. So now I've got this kind of um, uh, bit of a pop where I'm kind of um, pushing my drawing through that background. Let me just show you if, if, um, if this layer was not in the right place. In your layer palette, over here, there's a little um, uh, square cube, and if I push that cube up, that pushes that whole selection, whatever selected, into the new layers. So I've moved it up to the top. So if I had drawn that in the wrong layer, I could push it down to the back layer. Let's say I wanted it in this layer, and it's on top of the object. I want it just behind that object. Um, what you can do is you can say edit cut so get rid of it and then we select the object which is this drawing oh I, I got two things I didn't do that sorry I just wanted that um, cut that and then select where did my drawing go <laughs> hello something's going screw here oh, I think I grabbed both of them let's try this one more time okay so I got rid of that if I select my object, I can say paste in front, and that's the scenario I was trying to say if you drew this and it was on top. Um, so let's do it again. We'll cut, edit, cut, and this time we'll select, this is actually the drawing, the border, and I'll say paste in back. Okay, now my text is um, on top of this blue, and I could actually, it's not bad to leave it in gray, but I could at this point maybe change it to white. Oops, actually that's kind of cool too. I'm going to leave a little bit of blue in there because I like that. Um, <clears throat> now, maybe I want this um, fade to do something different. I could do two things. One, I'll Select it first, and depending on how your illustrator is set up, a lot of times your selection will remain, or your new artwork will remain uh, painted with the whatever you last selected. So I just selected that to basically suck up that pattern, and then I've done this. <coughs> Excuse me, hold on. Now I want it flipped over though, so I'm going to go back to my reflection. I'm going to my uh, gradient, click that. And in this case, I'm going to say negative 90 and hit return. And that will flip that over. So now it kind of fades into white and fades back out. And maybe that's a little too much. So I'm going to select this color. And I want it, I want this color to be lighter, but if I just move the blue down, it just becomes more gray. If I hold the black down, it becomes more blue. If I hold down shift and grab one of these, it'll move them both at the same time. So I want this to be really subtle, so that looks good. And there's the beginning of my layout. Um, let's say I want a kid. Oh, let's, let's zoom in here real quick and show you the difference. Right there, my white came out of the boundaries. So I'll select that, use my pencil tool, and clean that up by going on the inside of the line. And like I said, I don't mind if the blue comes into my drawing a little bit. No, that's too much. Um, that will look better than a, if my white went on the outside. You could see the difference. That's less distracting than that. So let's get rid of that just by redrawing that. <laughs> and now if I wanted to resize these, I can drag across both of those. So now I've got my drawing and my white shape there. And to make things simpler, I'll group those. So I go to Object and Group. So now those behave as one. And this is the Resize tool. Um, 
click somewhere to show your point of origin and then if I just start dragging I'll get um, stretched so I have to drag the best thing is to drag a 45 degree angle from the point you chose, drag, and hold down shift, and that constrains it to the actual um, size. So let's, let's go real dramatic here. Let's go up and even cover a little bit of the words. So Racer 2000, I want the 2000 to be behind that. And in this case, I set up my layers. Um, I'm not sure what layer that's on. Oh, that's in the art. Okay, so that's all right. Uh, some, if that was on the text layer, I'd have to move it down to art, but I would just want it behind this. So I'm going to do that same technique by cutting. I'll select this whole group now. Say edit, paste in back of what I've just selected, and there my text is behind it. 